it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I'm very far away. I might want to get a little closer to y'all tonight. I'm in my gown. I'm tired. Um, I've been, me and my sister have been running around trying to um, get an appointment at Affordable Dentures, and Lord have mercy, has it been a fiasco. So anyway, tomorrow will be the third time that we will have went to their office, and hopefully um, we will get to see the dentist tomorrow. So anyway, today, excuse me, she and I have been out running around all day, and um, I'm tired. And so she's spending the night with me tonight. Chris is actually um, up in Chickamauga tonight at his mom and dad's. His dad has to go to Vanderbilt tomorrow. He actually has a hole in his eardrum, and he also has a hole in the canal uh, that's beyond the eardrum. And so it can it can be kind of dangerous if for some reason it were to get infected uh, because if there's a hole, it could actually get up near the brain or into the brain. So the only place that can fix that is a doctor in at Vanderbilt. So they are actually driving there in the morning. He, his mom, dad, and sister. So he's going up there to spend the night. <clears throat> and it worked out because Melissa spent the night with me because we go uh, to the dentist for her tomorrow. So it's been pretty busy here uh, over the last few days, and I haven't seen y'all in a while. Last week, I don't think I came on but one day. I'm sorry, it's just been crazy. But um, I have been missing talking to y'all, and I hope that when I'm not here that y'all do kind of peek into the Word of God, even without me. Um, our our um, sermon yesterday was actually about... Um, our natures, and we're either um, trying to think of the first. Oh, the natural man, the spiritual man, and the carnal man. And um, the natural man is the man that hasn't been saved, and he's still of the world, and has the mind set um, of someone who's lost, and. And then there's the the um, spiritual man, the one that has, or woman, of course, the one that has been saved and actually gets in God's word and grows and um, lives by the spirit. And then there is the carnal man. And uh, lots of Christians automatically say, oh, I'm a spiritual man. But I have to admit, if you're the true spiritual man, the way that God would have us be, I would have to say I'm pretty carnal still. Um, it's it's uh, quite difficult to be um, as spiritual as we should be, and we should strive more to be that way. And the reason I say that is there's things that um, point us in the right direction and talk about the things that we might do or say that, that shows that we're still quite carnal, and some of those did apply to me. So, um, I don't have that list in front of me. I didn't bring it in here, I don't think, unless this is it laying here. Actually, this, no, this is my sister's journal. <laughs> She's got a journal, too. Um, so, I, I didn't bring the journal in here with me from church. So, we won't talk about that today, but maybe, just maybe, if I get home tomorrow, Melissa is having 18 teeth extracted, and um, I know not everybody, I mean, this is a private group, and not, no, it's not either, but anyway, she's having a bunch of teeth pulled tomorrow, so I'm hoping that she'll stay with me a couple of days and let me nurture her and feed her some delicious milkshakes, and I've already made some rice, and I got lots of gravy, and I've got, uh, I just want to do a bunch of stuff and feed her good, you know. And um, so anyway, I'm hoping she'll stay with me a couple of days, but I would like to come on even when she's here and do a Bible study with y'all. But she may actually be in this room tomorrow night, not feeling as well, that well. So uh, I may have to change my room up. Anyway, let's talk about Hebrews. And this is going to come out of chapter 12. And we're going to be in verses starting with verse number um, 3. 
okay? So it's Hebrew chapter 12, verse 3. We're going to start there tonight, and we are going to talk about uh, the discipline of God, okay? And uh, we all get disciplined throughout our life, and when we're younger children, of course, we get disciplined by our mother and our father, and sometimes at school, and then as we get older, if we are Christians, we get disciplined by God, and it is a good thing to get disciplined by God, but it's not always a happy and, and fun thing to go through, but it is supposed to bear fruit in the end and help us grow as a Christian, um, and we talked about that at church, how God, um, his will for us, you know, everybody wants to search for God's will when in all reality, God's will for us is to, um, read his word and become more and more like Jesus Christ and more and more spiritual, uh, by letting him live through us. And that's what God's will is more than anything. And it's so easy for us to to do it if we weren't so carnal and we weren't so in the flesh because all we'd have to do is pick up his bible and read it and we could be so much more spiritual because we all know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the lord and um learning his word helps us grow and mature as christians so anyway, I'm going to start reading the Word of God tonight, and then we're going to read our little Bible study. And um, the discipline of God, it says, for consider him. No, I'm just going to start with verse um, 5, and it says, You have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. Now listen to this, you guys, because this is a real blessing. This is a blessing from God. This is a promise from God. That is actually a good thing, even if it's not always the most fun thing. It is something we should get excited about. And the reason is because we are true children of God. And it says, My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirit and life? For they, indeed, for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them. That's they as our, our real, uh, our um, Father here has chastened us as we as it seemed best to them. But he, talking about God, for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So, this is a promise from God. This is a um, true sign that you're a child of God. Um, we all are in the spirit in heavenly places and we all are that have been saved. We are all true children of God. We're brothers and sisters in Christ and we belong to him and we are his children and therefore he does chasten us and we should be excited that he loves us enough to want to make us into something better for his profit and for his holiness. And um, so that's what this Bible lesson is about today, Out of Jesus, Our Perfect Hope by Charles Stanley. Uh, today was actually, um, the Bible reading was about sportsmanlike conduct. And y'all, I am about the most unsportsman person on the face of the planet so I didn't really want to read that tonight, and I chose this one instead. It was yesterday's. It's the long lesson. 
And it says, it is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. Okay. It says, endurance is not just the ability to bear difficulties. It's the, ca it's the capacity to triumph in uh, and over them. You've probably had seasons at, of adversity when you've experienced trouble in remembering the basic truths of God's word. Ironically, those times demanded you to hold on to his truth the most. And so, as you've clung to his promises, you found that not only did they become more real to you, but they've actually become a vital part of your life. Likewise, your difficulties have probably helped you view your situation from God's perspective. For example, when the Apostle Paul was in prison, from an earthly viewpoint, it looked as though his ministry was over. However, he realized that God had put him there to evangelize one of the most impenetrable sectors of Roman society. The, y'all, they use some pre, pre, Praetorian guards. Okay, let's start over. How, however, he realized that God had put him there to evangelize one of the most impenetrable sectors of Roman society, the guards, I'll just say that. Hopefully, God has shown you how he is working through your trials as well. The point is, no matter how long the trial, trust that God is bringing good out of them. Such lessons take time to work into your soul. So endure and be victorious by understanding that what he is achieving in and through you is worth it. And then he says uh, that we should pray, Jesus, please give me your divine perspective on my troubles and make your word even more real to me. Amen. So um, we know that we can depend on God to teach us truths through our trials. And Sometimes those trials come because of chastening, and sometimes they don't. Only God really knows. Um, sometimes the things we go through, if it's chastening or if it's just a trial that we're going to go through in order to be able to help somebody else go through it later. And only God knows why. And sometimes it's natural for us to question why. Um, I think that's fine. Because there's plenty of people in the in the Word of God that question, um, but we should always know that no matter what the answer, um, God has us going through it for a reason. So um, I hope tonight's lesson um, hit home with some of you at least, and even if it didn't, uh, just the the fact that we are true children of God, we really are God's children. We have been adopted into the family of God, just knowing that he cares about us enough to chasten us ought to get us excited because we know if we're a parent, as a parent, that we only do those things to our children because we love them. And it's exciting to think that God loves us that much. The God of this universe, the God that has created everything in our universe would take the time out and love us enough individually to chasten us is a miracle, really. And it's a blessing. So I hope that's an encouragement for you tonight. Um, I'm hoping that I do get to see y'all more a little bit more this week um, with Bible study. It's just kind of, you know, how, how things go my way. Last week, me and Melissa were together again um, for a few days. You know, for a little bit of time, we had some things happen, and um, Saturday, May moves into college, and we get to move all of her stuff into her dorm room, so that'll be fun. Thursday, of course, is the grand finale show of Family Food Fight, so that's exciting, and um, it's just been pretty, pretty fun around here the last few weeks. Amy started school and is doing good. We got her senior pictures. I need to post those on our, our um, personal site so y'all can see how beautiful they are. So let's say our prayers, and I thank you so much for joining us tonight. I thank you for being a part of Real Southern Woman. 
I thank you for helping me be encouraged in the Word of God, and I hope that I encourage you as well. I love each and every one of y'all, and I do pray for you. Regardless if I'm here or not, I do pray um, for you all. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today, and we thank you for your Word, and we thank you for um, allowing us to become children of God through your Son, Jesus Christ, and our salvation. We thank you so much for loving us enough that you would chasten us and care for us as your children in order to make us into something better for your glory. Um, be with us as we go throughout each and every day. Help us make the time out to read your word so that we can be a little bit more spiritual and not carnal. Even if we are saved, we're either spiritual or carnal. And I pray that each of us would strive to be a little more spiritual or a lot more spiritual, really. We should, we should want to be more spiritual than carnal. Um, be with us um, tonight and tomorrow, and I hope we get to see you each other again tomorrow evening. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I hope y'all have a blessed night, and um, I guess that's it. Melissa's actually enjoying a nice bubble bath. She doesn't have a tub where she lives, so she's getting to um, enjoy that. So she'll be relaxing while I go relax too. Y'all have a good night, and we will see you hopefully tomorrow. Love ya. Bye.